Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Academy of Music, to trustees, honored guests, faculty, alumni, friends, and family here gathered together for the 133rd commencement exercises of the University of the Arts. Now let me begin by asking all of you to join me in acknowledging first and foremost the graduating class of 2011. Now students, this is for you. We're gonna have lots of opportunities to cheer for you this morning, singly and collectively. But I'm going to ask you to join me now in welcoming to you arts, and more importantly, in saying thank you to the people who are here today to celebrate with you. They have been with you every step of the way these last four years, and for many, many years before that. You would not be here without them, Class of 2011, I want you to bring the house down for your parents, your friends, your brothers and sisters, your grandparents, and everybody who helped you get here today. Now we're, now we're cooking. <clears throat> the, the class of 2011 is very special to me. Like most of you, I started here at the University of the Arts, as a freshman you might say, in the fall of 2007. And while I will not graduate with you, it seems to be taking me a little bit longer to finish my liberal arts than it took most of you. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'd like to consider myself, with your permission, a fellow member of the class of 2011. Now, thinking of myself as a graduating senior uh, sends me back, actually, about 20 years to the last time I was a graduate, to a day when I was sitting out there, where you are, looking back up at somebody like me, in an imposing and slightly ridiculous costume. <laughs> Charged as I am now with addressing all of you, I think especially about the words that were spoken to me 20 years ago. And I wonder, what should I say to you, my classmates? What was said to me? What would be meaningful? What was meaningful all of those years ago? Now, I remember that there were many speeches that first time I graduated. Some were by classmates. One was funny, one was in Latin. Another was by the president of the university, not especially funny and not in Latin. And one was by a famous Russian statesman, uh, statesman which might as well have been in Latin. <laughs> but I'm sorry to say that I don't remember a single word. Not even a sentiment. There must have been something said about making a difference in the world. There almost always is. And someone must have spoken about the transformative power of the educational experience that we as graduates had shared over four years. But I can't say for certain. I can tell you that it was overcast that day, that I had some trouble keeping my cap on, that I worried about my parents getting lost after the ceremony, and that I still had a heck of a lot of packing to do. But as to the speeches I had heard, nothing. So what shall I say to you? If I can't remember a word of what was said to me, words that I'm sure were thoughtful and wise and were labored over by those who spoke them, 
If I can't remember those words, what can I hope to say now that will make a difference to you? Maybe, maybe it isn't the words that, spoken, that are spoken here today that matter. Maybe it's the day itself, these hours, these moments. Because this day is much bigger than what happens in it. It's much more important than anything that's said to you by me or by anyone else. It is a unique moment, a profound one. You'll have more moments like it in your life, but none will be quite the same. The great modernist architect Paul Rudolph, this is the part that you're going to forget. <laughs> the great modernist architect Paul Rudolph said something about this kind of moment in a lecture to the American Institute of Architects in 1963. He said, I quote, we must understand that after all the building committees, the conflicting interests, the budget considerations, and the limitations of his fellow man have been taken into consideration, the architect's responsibility has just begun. He must understand that in the exhilarating, awesome moment when he takes the pencil in hand and holds it poised above a white sheet of paper, he has suspended there all that has gone before and all that will ever be. The agony and the ecstasy of the creative act cannot be delegated. Now, Rudolph was an architect, but I suspect that all of you, whether dancer, painter, designer, actor, illustrator, filmmaker, know what he was talking about. A moment of possibility, of decision, of responsibility. A point of inflection between rehearsal and performance between analysis and execution, between training and action, between past and future. And while Rudolph was speaking particularly of the moment before the design act or process begins, he might as well have been speaking of this moment right now. You've prepared for four years to become an artist, in some cases many more. For a few of you, nearly all of your lives. You have hopes and aspirations, of course, Many of you have made plans for next week, for the summer, for next year. But today, right now, everything that has led you here and everything that will follow is suspended in this moment, like Rudolph's pencil above a white sheet of paper. Right now is your moment. You own it, not me, not your professors who worked so hard to help you reach this moment, not your family, without whom you could not have gotten here. This moment is yours and yours alone, with all of its terrors and uncertainties and all of its glorious possibilities. Now, I said that this day, this moment, is unique. That's true. Graduation from college happens once, hopefully. Earning a graduate degree happens only rarely. And in American culture and society, graduation is invested with enormous meaning. It's viewed as a critical rite of passage. Your challenge as creative artists, as human beings, is to create more moments like this one for yourselves. Indeed, your challenge is to invest every moment with the same sense of possibility, of uncertainty, of instability, which society has conspired to invest in this moment. You are the hand suspended above the page, and you are always suspended there, just about to decide to commit to mark the page or the stage or the future. Now that's not to say that you never put pencil to paper, never speak the first words of the script, never put the vessel in the kiln. You must do so no matter how unready or ill-prepared you feel. Rather, it is to tell you that as an artist, you always have the right, the ability, the responsibility to lift your hands from the paper, to pause and rethink, to reinvent, to choose again, to choose differently. That is your prerogative and responsibility as an artist, to create, to embrace the moment of possibility, of uncommitment, of imagination. 
And so that is what I am going to leave you with today. Not my words, 20 years from now, probably 20 minutes from now. They will be lost to you as you plunge headfirst into the future. Diplomas, celebrations, perhaps internships, graduate school, jobs, families, houses, and on and on. The gift that I wish to give you, a graduation gift from one classmate to another, is no wisdom or poetry from me. It is this moment right now, a moment of focus, of reflection, of possibility, a moment that belongs to you alone, that is yours to fill, a moment that stands for all other moments that will follow it. When you stand back, look forward and behind, imagine your future, and choose it. My gift to you is the next 10 seconds. 10 seconds of silence. Own this moment for yourself. Become that pencil poised above the page. Look down at that blankness, that impossible, infinitely possible possibility, and imagine. So quiet, quiet now. Thank you. Congratulations.